get her. So who were these people at Farad Tuan? This is actually a picture of a Huron, and if you study what John Smith, Captain John Smith, talks about as he describes these people, he says they dress and wear their hair much like the Hurons. And so I felt very comfortable in using this picture, but I wanted to make sure that you all knew. The French, Etienne Boulet, Champlain, in the end, in fact, the Jesuit priests use this word a lot, and dasties. And if Dick Cowles were here tonight, he'd say, just remember the nasty and dasties. And they were the only tribe that the Iroquois were said to ever fear. But it wouldn't be long before the Iroquois would get their guns and have their way with them as well. From the south, you see the French were up north, okay, they were moving down into the interior this way. And then when you think about the Dutch and the English, they were coming up. Okay, so we we're getting the squeeze, really from the whole gang, and that's why Captain John Smith comes to it, Pocahontas, Captain John Smith, 1608, he actually goes to the Chesapeake Bay, discovered, discovers, he names the Susquehanna River, and he names those people upon it, the Susquehannocks, and they believe that the, the Karantuan Nation was really one of, just another break off of this group that actually lived along the whole Susquehanna. This is what he said. Sixty of those Susquehannocks came to, to us, so he's going up the river, and all of a sudden, er, 60 of these people come to him. Such great and well-proportioned men are seldom seen, for they seem like giants to the English. These are the strangest people of all those countries, both in the language and attire. For their language, it may well be seen their proportions, sounding from them as a voice in a vault. Five of their chief werewolves came aboard us, the greatest of them is hair, and it's a lot like the Huron. One side was long and the other shorn close, with a ridge over his crown like a cock's comb, the calf of whose leg was three quarters of a yard around, and all the rest has lived so answerable to that proportion that he seemed the wealthiest man we have ever beheld. And you know what he did after that? He said, let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> he turned around and he ran. And that's why when you look at his 1608 map, you see the Susquehanna River, and you see this huge, giant Indian casting a shadow over everything else above it, because that's as far as he went. 